Good evening. Welcome to, this is the farthest west budget hearing, I think. Where District 5 begins. District 5 begins. <laughs> We're happy to be here. I'm Ed Zerker. I'm the city manager. Uh, this is, I don't know, maybe the eighth or ninth of our budget hearings. We're going to have 20 of them, so... We're almost halfway through, but we have three going on tonight, so there's lots going on all over the city. Um, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here in District 5. I'll turn the microphone over to Councilwoman Guevara in just a moment. I do want to recognize that we have a representative, Lee Woods White, from the mayor's office here as well as the, as the council district. And before I go any farther, I'll ask Mario to introduce himself for a Spanish translation. Thank you. So we have a, every year we go through a budget, uh, budgeting for the city of Phoenix, and we have information in all sorts of different ways. And we, one of the things that we do is come to the community to hear input about it. But the, the most amount of information is online at phoenix.gov slash budget. You can learn more than you ever wanted to know there. We also publish information like this that you, I hope you had a chance to pick up on your way in which has some more detail about this year's proposals for additions to our budget. And then we're going to have a, a video here in just a minute that gives about an eight-minute overview of things. So there's different levels of information. You can dig in for as much as you'd like uh, in different ways, but we're happy that you're here with us. So if you have a chance to take a look at this and tell us what you think, that's great. If you want to comment off of the video, that's wonderful as well. I want to thank our city employees for being here. We have many city employees here to listen and hear what people are, have to say, but also to be available if there are specific questions that they can answer. They'll, they'll find you and, and talk to you about that. Um, we ask if you'd like to speak, if you'd fill out a speaker card uh, so that we can call your name. Uh, also, we'll ask you to speak from, where are we speaking from tonight? The podium? Is there a microphone over there? There'll be a microphone there that allows you to see people. It also allows our Phoenix TV folks to get uh, a full, full view of you. We are recording these. We do put them on our YouTube channel. It allows people who aren't able to be here to see what it is you have to say, and also other council members who aren't able to be here to hear what you have to say as well. We take minutes, and uh, those are all passed around and published um, uh, publicly as well. So with that, uh, I will turn it over to our councilwoman who's hosting tonight, Councilwoman Vanya Guevara. And after that, we'll go to the budget video. With that, uh, please join me in welcoming Councilman Guevara. Round of applause for you all for, for being here and taking an active role in your community to make sure that we hear directly from you. Again, thank you, city staff, for being here. And to the residents and the community leaders who play an active role in developing and making sure that our community's voices are heard, thank you for being here. Um, I worked early on to make sure that we had community uh, budget hearings out here in Via de Paz. Um, so just to be accessible and to be able to hear from, from you all. Um, we take your concerns, your input very seriously. I do want to give credit where credit is due in terms of we are looking at a participatory budget proposed by uh, community partners and, and our youth, and we're also looking at um, a, a fund for, for our ad hoc committee that we started for trauma incidents. Again, community cal collaborations go a long way. It's definitely a starting point. I think it's a point where we can continue to grow from. It's, it's not the end all. It's, not the, it's, it's just a, a stepping stone in the right direction. I'm really grateful to be here. Um, this is the community space. This office belongs to the council district. Um, and I'm here to hear you all and, and serve you all. So thank you for being here. I believe we have a presentation for you all. And I look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you. first look at the City of Phoenix trial budget for 2019-20 proposed by the City Manager for public review and comment. The City budget is about people and programs for a stronger Phoenix. Every year the City prepares a trial budget. This process gives you, our residents, an opportunity to share your priorities and feedback on how tax dollars are spent three important points about this year's budget. It is balanced, which is required by law, and there is a surplus to allocate toward people and programs. Also, for the first time since the recession, ongoing revenues are equal to ongoing costs. 
We have a nearly $1.4 billion structurally balanced general fund budget thanks to Phoenix's continued strong economy and sound leadership by the mayor and city council. These efforts have led to a projected surplus of $55 million, of which $35 million is in ongoing resources and $20 million is in one-time resources. Over the next several minutes, we'll provide you a high-level view of the recommendations for how that surplus could be spent. Approximately 70% of the surplus is proposed for employee compensation, and the remaining 30% is proposed for services and $5.5 million to continue investing in the Public Safety Pension Reserve Trust Fund to protect against unexpected downturns in investments. The 2019-20 trial budget continues to provide the core services residents expect. Chief among these is public safety. In addition, many recommendations are focused on improving neighborhoods, parks, libraries, support for outreach and services for people experiencing homelessness, additional street landscape maintenance, and preparations for the 2020 census. The city also continues to invest in maintaining the facilities you depend on and the fleet of vehicles that provide you everything from police response to street cleanups. Besides these proposals, we'll highlight expenditures that help the city address growth in construction and maintain the city's wastewater infrastructure. First, general fund recommendations. The general fund is made up of several different sources of revenue, including sales taxes, state shared revenue, and property taxes. Three-fourths of the general fund pays for police, fire, and courts, with a smaller portion, the remaining 25%, going for everything else, like libraries, parks, senior services, arts, and administrative and support functions. The primary focus of the general fund service additions is public safety across a wide array of departments. Here are some of the proposals. Eight new firefighter positions to provide 24-hour operations at Fire Station 55 at I-17 and Joe Max Road in North Phoenix. The creation of one new fire department crisis intervention unit and in the police department, the escalation training and community response services support for officer-involved shootings. These recommendations are based on public feedback from last year's budget process and the city's traumatic incident intervention resources ad hoc committee. Another key area of public safety funding is focused on improving police support processes, using civilian staff to free up police officers' valuable time for calls and service. First, the addition of 10 civilian positions to support a federally mandated transition to the FBI's Uniform Crime Reporting National Incident-Based Reporting System. And second, the addition of 13 positions to streamline police booking procedures and create two new centralized booking centers to get officers back on the street faster. The trial budget also provides funding for increased inspection capacity to ensure buildings are meeting fire safety codes. Other public safety allocations, public defender representation for veterans and individuals with mental illness. In human services, add a caseworker and a vehicle to provide mobile victim advocacy. Security guard staffing at every library technology funding for cybersecurity to protect the city's infrastructure. In all, the trial budget proposes spending an additional $6.5 million on these and other public safety additions. Now, let's look at where you live, investments in programs to strengthen neighborhoods. First, the budget would allocate approximately $1 million to add staff to work with neighborhood groups, to clean up blight, work with nearby businesses, and improve response times for neighborhood issues. Parks and Recreation would see eight new park ranger positions to increase patrol coverage at neighborhood and urban parks for a cost of about $1.1 million. Street Transportation and Public Works would support neighborhoods by transitioning staff from a temporary to permanent status 
to clean up encampments and washes and right of way for a cost of $970,000. Historic preservation would also get $75,000 to support historic property preservation. In all, neighborhood revitalization would see an additional $3.5 million in funding. Next, community services additions restore some desired programs to strengthen the community and expand other resident requests, including restoration of Sunday library hours at four branches means all libraries will be open to provide greater access to in-demand books, movies, classes, and programs for library patrons of all ages. Expand the Phoenix Teens program for youth at 10 city sites, providing youth programs six days per week at a cost of $448,000. Providing case management assistance for homeless seniors and grant funding for arts organizations for youth and underserved communities would also be included. The budget would also add $1.3 million for long-standing street landscape maintenance needs, increasing frequency of maintenance from three to four times per year. New this year, a proposal to allocate funding to implement participatory budgeting or other projects in city council districts. Lastly, the city will invest in outreach to encourage residents to take part in the 2020 census. Given the move to digital form submission this census, the additional funds will help to ensure hard to count and hard to reach populations participate so that Phoenix gets its fair share of the approximately $866 million in annual revenues allocated through federal programs for public safety, transportation, housing, and human services. Overall, added general fund expenditures outlined in the trial budget total $55.2 million and would add 131 positions to strengthen our people, programs, services, and infrastructure. Moving on to propose non-general fund additions for a variety of services. Strengthening our street transportation department with 11 positions added or converted to full time for a variety of services to support increasing work in the right of way and the recently expanded street maintenance funding in the capital improvement program budget, $768,000. Water services will see 21 positions and approximately $2.9 million in funding to keep up with demand at the department's 91st Avenue treatment site, the state's largest. The site is currently treating 180 million gallons of water a day for more than 2.5 million residents in five cities. Finally, 19 positions for planning and development to address increasing construction demand, including reduction of turnaround times for pre-application submittals and complex commercial architectural plans. Added staff to ensure adherence to fire system requirements and ADA accessibility codes, and to maintain a 24-hour turnaround time for residential inspections. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about the 2019-20 trial budget. We hope that you'll review additional details in the budget pamphlet available at one of our 19 community budget hearings and online at phoenix.gov slash budget. Please share your feedback in whatever way works best for you at a public meeting or via email at budget.research at phoenix.gov. You can comment on the city's social media at City of Phoenix AZ on Facebook or Twitter and use hashtag Phoenix Budget or call us at 602-262-4800. Thank you for being part of this important process. Is it working? Oh. Hi. All right. Thank you for uh, watching that. Now we're going to begin. We have a list of cards here, beginning with Maria Sanchez. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Maria Sanchez. Um, I've been part of District 5 for basically my whole life, the District 5 and 3. Um, and as I see, especially like this, the Maryville area, which I'm usually at, um, is mainly built by Hispanics, right? So it's like about 76% 70, Hispanic. The medium age is around 27. So I feel like, um, especially being here today, that is some, I am basically that representative here for my community. Um, and I wanted to start by saying the whole process for the budget process is very not available for community. It's, you know, the, it's not accessible. Um, and the fact that as leaders we're, we're getting, we're, for community you're getting input last doesn't seem correct to me. I feel like community input should be first, right? And to be able to build the budget if it is our money. Um, as we start digging into the three sources of where revenue comes from and, you know, the special revenue, the general funds, um, and all that, like, we're starting to see more and more that it really is our money. Um, so why aren't we being asked first where that money is being spent? So that's my first concern. Um, and I want to just say, right, it's not, the, it's not transparent. So wherever money we used last year, I wanted to know if there's a process for us to see where, like, for example, the trees, right? There was, like, a lot of saying that we were going to get new trees. Which districts got those trees? Is there a way that we can find that out? Um, because I haven't seen any in my community, actually. Um, so I feel like we, if it is our money, and we should be getting quarterly reports on how that money was spent and what district it was spent. And residents, again, need to be part of the budget creation process from the very beginning, not to the very end when there's like 20 community meetings in like 10 days. Because then it just makes, it just feels like shelf to me, like not that they really care to listen to where it should go. Right. Um, another thing that I wanted to say as community leader is that I'm glad that we have the trauma fund for victims of police violence. I actually feel like we should increase that more money, right? If we're increasing money to give more from the $55 million that is left of the city, then let's increase that trauma fund because we know that the more money you're wanting to give to police, that's going to be more criminalization, more police interaction. And so we need to invest more into the trauma fund. I'm in full support of it especially knowing that last year 44 people were shot by police. Number one city and officer involved shootings. It's alarming and we need to recognize that it is a health issue in our community, right? And our community is not feeling safe, safe, especially again going back to the fact that this, especially District 5 is built in, in Maryville is built in 76% Hispanics. I can tell you that my community does not feel safe with police presence. Um, and then another thing I want to say is that I'm, as we've been talking to community, the number one thing we're getting is the housing crisis, right? So we're all like in any kind of medical emergency or car emergency, anything like that, away from, sorry, was it my time? Oh, okay, I didn't know, I was, it was time. Um, we're all like in medical or any kind of emergency away from being, uh, can I afford rent next month, right? Like we're all feeling that pressure. So I feel like we need to invest in affordable housing. We need it. So invest in people and programs. Um, affordable housing is number one, and we've been collecting service. We've been doing the city's job and talking to community, and that is what community is saying. Invest in service for homeless and, and victims of youth. Invest in free, like free programs for youth or at least income-based, because even though I, I am a mom right now, I cannot put my son to any programs, even if they were available based on even working full-time. I can't afford it. So we need to invest in um, programs for youth. I know as a city that we can't have, you know, invest in education, but we can start investing in before, before programs, after school programs that will allow our, our youth to have job training opportunities and build these skills. Um, not the golf course. Like there's a golf course so close to Maryville, like students, they don't have anywhere to go after school in Maryville. All right, but there's a golf course there, that makes no sense. Like, um, and in investing in men mental health care and a process to create the budget that includes residents from the very beginning and implementing the municipal ID that was um, introduced a few years back, but I know that there was no funds for it. And we, ma we have to make sure that there is a policy that must include commi uh, commitment to not share the dat database with any law enforcement agency and that if we do implement it, that uh, Phoenix Police is respecting the ID and getting training on that. Right, municipal ID is something that has been passed. The only reason we haven't implemented it is because there was no funding. So we have $55 million left over. We should get it. Community said they want it. And it's going to make them feel safer. 
Um, that's all I wanted to add. Oh, last thing, sorry. Um, we should not be spending 336000 more to library security. Even like library staff didn't know this was happening. So I don't know where you all got those numbers, but as some community from that work at the library said, they have no idea why this is happening, that we should actually be putting in more into hours for the library and resources versus going to, again, just harass people, right? And 1.7, that is gonna be spent on the park rangers. Park ranger just means more policing for music and, and harassing youth and homeless instead of actually bettering our, our parks. So that doesn't make any sense. Um, and the additional 2.5 million from the general funds that we wanna give to the police is unacceptable. We need to stop, stop freeze and freeze the funds for police. Police should not be getting any more money if we are number one in officer involved shootings of last year and this year. So again, just invest in people and programs and not to criminalize us. Thank you, Maria. Um, up next we have, is it Andrew Lubert? Lo Lubert, sorry. Buenas tardes, good evening. Thank you for the chance to comment on the budget. Uh, my name is Andrew Lubert, and I'm speaking on behalf of Central Arizona Shelter Services, also known as CAS. Um, for those who aren't familiar, CAS is the largest homeless shelter both uh, in Phoenix and Maricopa County and Arizona. And uh, we serve folks from all over the city. And, you know, first, the, so thank you, city, for the support we've gotten all these years. Without the city's support, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. However, there are, there's strains going on right now in the marketplace. As example, um, we've seen a 149% increase in unsheltered adults that uh, are homeless. Uh, we tend to turn, turn away at least 350, sometimes 400 people monthly seeking a shelter all times of the year because there's not enough beds. In fact, we're down 27% in beds in the last two years. 382 beds have disappeared. During all this, the folks we are serving, we've seen an increase year over year in the number of senior folks that are homeless. Many are first time homeless. And you know, one of the causes of that is um, their income is fixed, but as was mentioned earlier, the cost of renting a place is going way up. We've seen you know, month over month sometimes increases in average cost for rents. Yet our, our grandparents are still on fixed income and now they're getting turned out and becoming homeless. They have higher and higher medical expenses again that they have to take out of their pocket. And so we're seeing a real challenge in meeting the needs of this new homeless population, often for the first time. These are folks that worked their whole lives and sent our generations to college and sent our generations to summer camp and all the other things that our parents and our elders have done for us. Now it's time for us to do something for them. What uh, this all boils down to is, uh, you know, we are looking, we appreciate the funding we get. No question about that. Um, but if it's possible to obtain another $250,000 in funding with resources out there, that would allow us to do more case management. It would allow us to be able to uh, continue to invest in our senior homeless program. We've done some investment. We have hired a senior case manager and a navigator. We have obtained private sector funding this past year. and we're doing our best to be able to offset the higher costs of serving the homeless population. But the work never ends, and you know the funding hopefully will never end, but could be bumped up a little bit. So with that, I just wanna thank you again, and thank the good work of uh, Mr. Zerker and his office, our council, our first uh, responders. Often that's how we get clients in CAS, is the work of our fire department and our police department. So thanks for the good work, everybody at the city. I say that for a guy whose wife uh, was a 34 year employee at the city. So I know firsthand how hard staff work. So thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Next we have Luke Black. Is there any way that we can get the AC turned on? 
I know. Yeah, we were, I, someone was working on it. We're working with custodial staff to try to fix it. I know it's been a problem. I'm sure sorry. It's warm for you all. This no, it, is for yeah. us. No, sorry about that. We're working on it. Thank you. So uh, I would like to address a couple of issues, um, um, spending priorities. First of all, I would like to thank all my fellow residents who turned out today um, and, and decided to raise their voices uh, in this process. Um, first of all, um, looking at uh, the general fund, we do see an increase for police spending. Uh, I would uh, ask that that uh, spending be frozen. Uh, there are multiple um, elements within um, the general fund that create safety uh, that don't involve the police um, and the additional $2 million in the general fund um, could go to creating um, opportunities for folks uh, that um, build community safety and aren't just responses um, that don't actually address the uh, needs of the community. Uh, so that's the first one. Secondly, I'd like to see the $1.7 million in park rangers uh, be redirected. Um, there are a lot of parks in this city that have failing equipment, that don't have drinking fountains, that don't have accessible restrooms, uh, that don't have lights for evening use. Um, there are tons of opportunities to spend that money elsewhere um, besides park rangers. Um, I was at the park meetings when we discussed um, the code of conduct, and I recognized that that $1.7 million for park rangers is directly connected to um, what, how the city is choosing to solve its homeless um, people problem. Um, so that we have the $1.7 million for park rangers, uh, we also have the additional money that is going to the library for security, which is for homeless folks that are in the libraries. Uh, and it, it was really disturbing to see how the city, um, in very subtle ways, is directing money uh, to solve the homeless problem, as they call it, um, through increased security, through increased law enforcement. Um, you've got $1.7 million there. You've got $336 million that could easily go to CAS to cover the $250 million that, or $250,000 that they just asked for. Uh, I would also um, reiterate uh, what my fellow residents said about fully funding the trauma fund, um, but I would ask that the additional money that is uh, in that trauma fund for police uh, de-escalation and cultural competency training be added specifically to the fund um, to support victims of police violence. We've got a lot of cultural competency. We've got a lot of de-escalation training that the police are already getting a lot of money for, and we have not seen evidence uh, that that funding is actually creating a change. And so why are we continuing to throw money at that? And then last, uh, uh, Council um, woman, I would ask that you uh, restart the Muni ID process. Uh, that was passed by city council in 2016. Uh, this, the city chose not to fund it at that time. And once Trump was elected, the city uh, chose not to put in uh, safeguards for community members. Uh, that is still something that we need. And there are lots of funding opportunities uh, within the general fund should you redirect that money, the $2 million from the police, that you could kickstart that Muni ID again. Thank you. Thank you, Luke. Um, next. Next is Ruby Bar Barraza. While she comes up, I just want to mention, Luke, it, it's not a million seven four Rangers. Um, I, I think the, the video lumped a bunch of stuff together. It's a million dollars for Rangers. Also included in that million seven is a general recreation uh, program uh, to add more recreation in the parks uh, and um, a Phoenix Teens program for teens. So there's a mix of things in there, but I think the video sort of went over it a little too broadly. So that, it's a good point. In the pamphlet, it breaks it down into more discrete. But I, I understand your point. I'm not. I'm not diminishing your point, I just wanted to clarify the numbers, so. Great, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone, Councilwoman Wabata. My name is Ruby, and I'm a clinical social worker. I've been a constituent of District 5. I was born and raised here, and I've actually voted for you. So I'm here to 
uh, just ensure that the community budget is allocated in a way that reflects my values and the values of the people that I serve. Um, with that, looking over the proposed budget, I saw some good, but there's a lot of room for improvement. Um, as the people who have, who have gone before me have mentioned, um, I'll just reiterate some of the things that I would like to see also is more affordable housing in this area. Um, I've worked with survivors of domestic and sexual violence, and that is a huge area of need in which there's just a deficit, and people are struggling and ending up in abusive homes, returning to those homes for lack of housing that's available here in Phoenix. Um, I would also like to see an increase in the trauma fund. Um, I think it's a start to allocate what was proposed, but I would like to see that um, increase, um, as well as more programs for youth. Um, as I mentioned before, I serve a lot of uh, marginalized communities, and in that, there's a lot of youth and children um, who are at risk. And so creating more programs for them, free programs, after-school programs, accessible, affordable childcare would also be fantastic. Um, and with that, like I mentioned, since I do have a social work background, um, mental health care is really important to me. And increasing that and making it accessible for the people of District 5, as well as all in, in, in City of Phoenix, um, would be also great. Um, with that, I would like to see um, a reduction in the proposed funds for uh, criminalization. I don't think it's um, something that we need nowadays. I think we need to look at the core drivers of violence, and that is um, when there's isolation, when there is um, the inability to meet your own economic needs, and if we address those, I think we don't need more police to solve that. Um, doing that is a false solution, in my opinion. Um, so looking at investing in people, investing in programs, investing in services, uh, making them accessible to our people um, would help instead of putting that money into, into false solutions. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Eduardo Pim. Howdy. My name is Eduardo, and uh, I'm, I'm in, live in District 4, but uh, I work in District 5, so I'm here representing that community today. And uh, at the previous uh, budget hearing that I went to, I spoke about the budget process and how all these seats need to be filled, and you guys should have a quota on filling these seats because a lot of the community members are left out, um, especially the community members in Maryvale and South Phoenix. And uh, the budget process should be more transparent. We need to have quarterly reports on where the money is spent and in which district. Um, to reiterate uh, my uh, community members' um, talking point. And uh, she, she also mentioned that we need to be part of the budget process from the beginning. Um, we only get about two weeks, two and a half weeks, to participate in these budget meetings. Um, I believe you guys start, I think you told me in, in March or, or something like that, but I know like some, some, like the police union starts lobbying uh, for things to go on the budget like since last year. So, so some of those things, you know, we, we don't get we don't get to participate in, so I would like to see the community members in every part of the budget process. And um, the last thing is the trauma fund for victims of police violence. Uh, I believe we should have that on the final budget, and um, I believe that uh, the $750,000 is not enough. Uh, we need more money to include the victims from last year and years before that. That is all, thank you. Thank you, Eduardo. Um, next we have Michael Ingram. My name is Michael, um, I work in District 5. Um, I'm here to talk specifically about the criminalization. Um, we have an, there's, 
upwards of a million dollars to directed towards particularly encampments. Encampments are cold words for people's homes, for people who don't have like a structural building to stay in, and the idea that we're going to invest a bunch of money in cleaning up their homes with no idea for services. We heard Cass say they are lacking in funds for the services needed for these exact same people who we plan to take their things and probably just toss them in the trash. And I also want to talk about the um, 13 civilian positions for booking. If you book less people, you need less people for booking. The city should be looking at ways to decriminalize and a lot, arrest a lot less people if we are going to be forced to have what these people are doing be require law enforcement to be looking for more sight and relief. It saves the city a lot more money, a lot more time. Um, the way we handle a lot of these things is a lot of these arrests are made and people are just, the court cases are dismissed. So we're not even spending money in man hours with police. We're spending a lot of money in the court system and all that avails to nothing because there is no punishment for these things. These folks are often just forced into the criminal justice system and then let go with everyone's time, energy, and money wasted. That is not a good use of city resources. That is a, that is a functionally just a waste. Nothing happens at the end, but we have these people locked up. So we should spend more time decriminalizing a lot of the activities. And if we are going to have them, we need to do more site release, giving people's tickets in a way that they doesn't force them to spend the night in jail, costing the city even more money. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Next, Isabel Garcia. Hi, everyone. Yes, my name is Isabel Garcia. Um, I work here in District 5, and I also have a lot of uh, family and friends who live here, so I've been on this side of town all my life. Um, I would like to reiterate all of the things that uh, my fellow community members have said so far. Uh, we are here to say that we're against the increased spending on criminalization, policing, and surveillance of our communities. Uh, specifically, I want to talk about the parks and the library. Um, the money that is said to be spent on park rangers should instead uh, be used for, to improve the quality of our parks. Um, like I said, I work here in District 5, but I was born and raised and still live in, in District 7 in South Phoenix. Um, and this is my first time here in this facility, and it's beautiful. This is a beautiful space, and there's nothing like this in District 7 or in District 8 in the South Side. Um, so instead of spending money on park rangers that will actually make us feel less safe, uh, make us feel like we're being... Um, watched all the time, why not invest in improving the parks in the other parts of town uh, that would greatly benefit from a facility like this, which is a, um, a beautiful um, asset to the community. Um, I also want to talk about the $336,000 that is spent to, or that is set to be spent on library security. Um, that money can instead be used to expand library services, expand library hours, um, and actually provide um, appropriate training for staff who are constantly uh, dealing with or, or working with folks who are homeless, who are dealing with, with mental health issues. Um, I have a lot of moms in my family, including my sister who's a single mom who uh, works the night shift and she relies on, on the parks and the libraries to, to keep my nieces uh, busy and uh, occupied and, and doing something productive with their time. And uh, youth programs here in the city are, um, are not accessible. They are very expensive. My sister cannot afford to put both her girls um, in a program, right, in an art program, in a dance program. So she has to choose, right, if, if she is going to invest money in that, she has to choose which one of my nieces is going to get um, an opportunity to participate in a program. And many times it, it's it's the library or the park, right? Um, so instead of spending on money that's actually gonna make my family feel less safe when they enter a library or park, if they see security guards or park rangers out there surveilling uh, the premises, um, that money could be spent to actually um, provide services for, for the people who need them the most. Um, I also wanna add that um, it's great that the city took up the participatory budget process uh, for next year. However, there's no indication of how community will be providing input in that process, and that pretty much defeats the purpose of a participatory budget. Um, it's meant for community and residents to have a voice and, and a decision-making role in deciding how money is going to be spent. 
So if um, that's another ask, another demand that I have that the city spell out clearly how community is going to be um, in that, in, at that table and how each council representative is going to be um, held accountable to making sure that the community is involved in that process. Thank you. First of all, I apologize for the temperature in here. We're trying to get the school district folks to fix it. I think they've been in a couple times and are struggling to, to get that. This is a Pendergast school facility, so we don't have direct control over it. Um, the participatory budgeting, which, as the councilman said, came out of last year's dialogue, is a pilot program, and it's actually basically council district by council district is how that engagement will happen. Uh, I have heard directly from Councilman Guevara how she intends to fully engage the community on that, and other council members will, um, uh, will have the ability to do the process as they see fit. So but it's something we're going to explore and try and figure out. Um, we've heard a lot about it from the Phoenix Union High School District experience, and I know um, that that's informed several of the council members about that. But thank you for those comments. Next, we have Jasmine Mesa. Uh, hi, my name is Jasmine. I'm a senior at North High School. Uh, I'm here today to ask for a bigger investment towards the youth of our city. Uh, there are many programs that are still um, like really unaffordable to families that could be really fundamental to the growth of students or anyone. Um, I know as a kid I always wanted to join certain programs and my parents could never really afford anything and it was also like me and my brother so both of us could never really, we were never really able to do anything outside of like school. Um, for the past couple of years, anytime um, me and my friends wanted to like go anywhere, we'd always have to choose to go somewhere like downtown or anywhere like not near our homes. And that wasn't because we didn't want to, but because there was like nowhere here for us to go to. Um, and then like Maria mentioned earlier, there's a golf course in Maryville that neither of us have even like been near. Um, so this shouldn't be happening, all areas in all of our community should be equally invested in. Um, with the surplus being added to the budget, instead of increasing funds towards like police or towards criminalizing our communities, money should be invested in letting students build their skills, leadership, and confidence. Thank you. Thank you, Jasmine. Next, we have Sarai Munoz Perez. Um, my name is Sari. Um, something that I want to see more of in the city budget is um, investment of people. There's not enough of this in the current um, proposed budget. In the video shown, it was says that part of the budget was going to um, invest in homeless people. However, there is nearly $400,000 set aside to attack people without a home. This, this is what the city is calling a neighborhood cleanup, and what this is is actually kicking homeless people out of the only place they have to stay, and we're ticketing them, but how does a homeless person that like clearly has no money, how are they going to afford that? This will only lead to their incarceration, and this is costing the city more, and we don't want this. This is not how we should treat members of our community, and this does not address the root problem of homelessness. Um, homelessness comes from like a lot of things. We need to be putting money in youth, in programs and services that will lead to the success of our communities. And eventually this will like help with the homelessness problem. And the money should also be put towards like giving homeless people access to resources and making homes affordable. This cleanup tells the people of Phoenix just exactly where the city's morals lie, and it's not in the community. Thank you, Sarai. Next, we have Cynthia Bays. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your last name. Okay. Hi. So my name is uh, Cynthia Baez. I'm a commissioner for the Phoenix Office of Arts, Arts and Culture. 
and I'm here just to talk about um, programs that help the community and the entire city um, for community purposes. Uh, on behalf of the Arts and Culture Commission, I want to express our, gra our genuine gratitude for the support the Council has given towards the Arts in Phoenix. Uh, we want to thank you for the 100000 allocated for public art maintenance. We have completed many public art projects around District 5, such as the bus shelters located along 67th Avenue and McDowell Road. The local citizens felt very strongly that the children were the most cherished members of their neighborhood, and they have worked hard to help them succeed in life. Therefore, the community worked very closely with the artists to create uh, windscreen panels at 10 bus shelters that could express these values. And that's just one of very many that we have uh, created as well as uh, a lot that we are uh, in the process of, of also creating um, through District 5. Uh, we understand that District 5 has a strong presence of African Americans and Latino Americans, so we make it a purpose that the art surrounding these communities reflect their culture, while also creating a safe and more vibrant city. We know one of the ways we can continue to do this is to assist other local art organizations with their own projects. We appreciate the 25,000 increase in the grant budget over the last year to invest in at-risk youth and communities. Especially in District 5, we support, I'm sorry, your support has allowed us to fund organizations such as Movement Source Dance Company, who often works with the Phoenix Day School for the Deaf and other schools that are in need to supplement programs in dance. We would like the opportunity to do more grant making such as our nearby cities who some have a budget of $1.7 million. To have the same ability as our competitors, we would like the city to consider moving in the direction of $1 per capita spending on arts and culture grant funding annually. Phoenix has become a city of innovation and opportunities and we want to use the arts and culture as a way that reflects our uh, advancements. We hope you see the importance of how arts and culture plays a role in this, and we urge that the city, we urge that the city keep moving in a positive direction for the coming years. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. Next, we have Viri Hernandez. So hot, <laughs> sorry. Um, okay. Uh, I'm, yeah, looking at this budget, one of the things that, and you know, sharing with some community members, something that has come about is, oh, this is an attack on homeless community, right? There's several ways that funding is being used as, um, as that, as an attack to remove people from spaces uh, without actually any additional investment in affordable housing and mandating the way that housing is being prioritized services and community. So park rangers, library security, quote, neighborhood cleanups, which means removing people from their homes and encampments, all of that to do what? To incarcerate them, right, if they ticketed them, um, and then what, right? There's no, nothing that is an actual solution in that space. And so when we're looking at this, right, we've been going around talking to community um, for a while. Last year we collected over 10,500 surveys um, in Phoenix, specifically asking people where would they like money to be spent. Um, and it was basic necessities, which was the, one of the most frustrating things to see. It's like people, you know, were like, oh, you know, we could have, I don't know, like what we have here, what, what's here at Villa de Paz, that cool stuff out there. People weren't even thinking about that because people are thinking about the street light that I've, like, I've called about a street light in, in the district for since December that still like, works like a strobe light. Um, it's still not fixed, right? Um, and that's been since December, and I've called pretty diligently. <laughs> um, so when people tell us, oh, you need to call, you need to ask, we know that that's not true because we've been doing that and it's not happening. And so what does it look like to actually invest in people, to actually invest in programs? I mean, investing in our neighborhoods. Everything from the street, you know, potholes that are being right now worked on, to regular cleanup, to true youth and arts programs, to programs for young people and students and babies like my niece, um, for programs for families, for spaces where we can, when people can come hang out, 
um, use internet and have you know access to air conditioning. Um, not today, <laughs> but other days. Um, Right, but spaces like that, like that's what we need. That's what our community needs. And when we think about what is actually gonna make us safer, we need to think about real solutions that make our people healthier. And from investing, you know, youth program, um, the arts fund that got cut by over four million, that cut in half. Like what would happen if we kept that money there and actually invested in arts programs? Um, the money that is being, that thankfully for the first time we're seeing increase in programs that we want, but Instead of having those park rangers, let's invest in accurate parks, right? Like in good parks, in parks that we can be proud of and increase that pride in our community. And so we've been talking to community and it is very clear that um, just the basic necessities for a dignified, basic dignified way of life is missing in, our, in a lot of our communities, specifically black and brown neighborhoods. Um, it is also clear that this process is very, lacks transparency and accountability. We've asked several times, where did the money go last year? What, the youth program money, where does that go? What neighborhoods did it go to? Because we're not seeing it, and our people don't feel that they're there, and we can't get a solid answer of this is where it went. So y'all need to increase your accountability to our taxpayer money, and let us know, like people mentioned, on a quarterly basis, where our money is going um, because at the end of the day, the general fund uh, is our money. And yeah, and so finally, so with all of that is like, we need to reduce, uh, get rid of that neighborhood cleanup thing, get rid of the park rangers, get rid of the library security, and actually invest in the programs that our people need to, to thrive in the city. Um, continue to invest in the trauma fund, bring back municipal ID as a program. Um, the policy was passed at a no cost to the city. I think it could still be at no cost to the city, but the city needs to invest up front. Um, and, and that's what we've seen. So those are the programs that are actually gonna make people feel welcomed, that are gonna make people feel included, that are gonna make people feel like, yeah, like we belong here and we deserve better. We deserve this, these parks that are here. We deserve them in the west side. We deserve them in Maryvale. 26 years later, finally stepped foot on the golf course for the first time. But even when we've talked to neighbors about that golf course, people had no idea and or cared if that golf course was gonna be shut down. They want a park. They want a place where we can access. I stepped foot for the first time and I was, you know, we were greeted by five security guards and I was like, oh, isn't this a public space? They said yes, so I'm like, okay. So we continued. Um, but that golf course here in Maryville, that should be an open public space to our community. And so that's what I'm asking. That's what we've seen. We hope to have the survey data um, compiled pretty soon. We're working with some universities to compile that. Um, and again and again, thousands and thousands and thousands of conversations and people felt that they do not feel safe with more police. Uh, police uh, use all of these excuses you're giving them to ticket and criminalize people and incarcerate them and community doesn't trust the police anymore, and it's losing trust in the city. So we need to figure out what we're gonna do and invest in our neighborhoods and invest in our community. Thank you all. Thank you, Vidi. Can the surveys be shared with city or can we? Okay, great, I'd like to see it. Maybe we could take a look at that together, Ed. Thank you. Up next we have Jennifer Hernandez. Uh, good evening. Um, so my name is Jennifer, as you just said. I uh, just wanted to kind of talk about two things that really kind of triggered me um, when I was going through, you know, the budget and looking at how it works. And one of them, when I first heard neighborhood cleanup, I was like, oh, that's so amazing. They're finally going to clean up the condoms that are at the park and on the playground or the needles or, you know, um, everything pretty much that's crappy at our park. But then I realized that it was $400,000 set aside to target homeless people and get them out of our community. And so then I was like, wow, that's just like, why can't, instead of, you know, investing in actually cleaning up our parks, because I remember one time I was at, took my daughter to the park and this little kid literally picked up a condom 
and went running with it. And thankfully, he didn't put it in his mouth, but he showed his dad. His dad freaked out and let, like they left. I haven't seen them since. And like I go to the park often. So it's, it's really to hear when we say neighborhood cleanup, we mean taking out our community. Because homeless people are not just homeless people. They're also part of our community. And setting $400,000 aside, that can go to so many things. Um, and then park rangers. So you want to include more park rangers to criminalize us, to criminalize homeless people and to criminalize young people. We can't even have, according to it, we can't even have like loud music or you know anything that has, that's going to disturb the peace. That's an automatic, like, okay, park rangers are coming. And I don't want to add park rangers to another list where like, I'm already scared of police. Now I'm going to be scared of freaking park rangers? Like, that's insane. Um, and like I'm, I can't afford to be ticketed for having my favorite song on at the park because I have my daughter there. Like that's ridiculous. I have a daughter. I have to pay rent. I have to pay my car bill. And you know, instead of using all this money to take away our homeless people and just push them to another neighborhood and include park rangers to ticket us, you can invest in affordable housing for them. You can invest in real solutions. You can invest in free programs for youth because. I'd rather my daughter be at, in a program throughout the day than have to take her to work. Because right now, she's at work with me all day. And I don't know, but as a four-year-old, I know I wouldn't want to be with my mom at work all day. And I, I can't afford $50 a week. I can't, that's, not, that's not something I can afford. So we need free youth programs, and we need to invest in affordable housing. Thank you both. Thank you, Jennifer. That, uh, that's, uh, does anyone have any else, any additional comments? I believe, algo más para quisiera hablar? Hola, buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Berta Rita. Good afternoon. My name is Berta Rita. Y aquí una madre de familia. Soy este organizadora de padres aquí en la área de Maryville. I'm a mother and I'm also an organizer of parents Juana, here in Maryville. Juana Rita. With me is also uh, Juana Rita. Yo llevo 28 años viviendo en esta área de Maryville. I've lived in Maryville for 28 years. Verdad, y siempre he estado con mucho miedo, ya que somos, este, yo abogo más que nada por los padres indocumentados. And we've always been really scared to live here. Um, I, a lot of my work is in advocacy for undocumented parents. Porque hemos sido muy afectados, muchos de nuestra comunidad, por parte de la policía, ya que han separado a muchas familias. Because we've been really impacted and targeted by police and, and the work that they've done to separate so many families. Muchas veces, este, aunque vaya uno caminando, la policía ha detenido a las personas. Many times, even if people are just walking, we've seen and we've heard of cases where police have stopped people. O he visto casos en que ellos va, vayamos de pasajeros, también este, hemos sido cuestionados por ellos. There's also cases, right, as passengers where we are questioned as well, just for being a passenger in a car, questioned by police. Nos piden identificación. They ask us for an identification. Y si no presentamos, nos llevan arrestados. And if we don't present anything, we get arrested. Y por eso es que yo estoy exigiendo una ID municipal que pasó en el 2016. And that's why I'm demanding here for es investment in the municipal ID that passed in 2016. Estoy pidiendo un fondo de compensación para que esa ID sea para nosotros y sea válida por la policía y sea 100% protegida Nosotros, más que nada, museos, seamos 100% protegidos. That our 100% of our information is protected, that our identities are protected, um, but that also that this is trained and enforced uh, right by the police department. Yo no sabía que yo tenía derecho sobre este presupuesto. I didn't know I had rights or a voice over this budget process. Pero ya sé que como también personas indocumentadas pagamos nuestros impuestos, nuestros taxes, siempre que vamos a las tiendas o cualquier cosa, tenemos vivienda. But I also know now son, son that 
just for being, like, as undocumented people, we pay taxes. We pay those sales taxes. We pay property taxes. We pay all the taxes and all the things that make up this general fund. Y también es nuestro dinero, y por eso vengo a exigir también parte de ese dinero para que sea ocupado en necesidades que nosotros necesitamos, ya que como personas indocumentadas. That is why, uh, because it is our money, I am demanding that this par portions and part of this money is invested in our community and our needs as a neighborhood. Somos las más afectadas en todo esto. Because as people in, in West Phoenix and Maryville, we're people that are most impacted by inequity. Este, y estoy pidiendo que en vez de la policía no es seguridad para nuestras comunidades. And I'm saying that police is not safety for our community. Ya no queremos que se invierta, que se dé más inversión en las policías, ni queremos ni necesitamos más policías en nuestra comunidad. We don't need or want any more police in our neighborhoods. Queremos que todo nuestro dinero se invierta para que seamos mejores personas, tengamos mejores hijos con programas donde se les pueda ayudar como centros de rehabilitación para jóvenes con adiciones. We want those funds to be used to make us full and well and better people, for those, for those funds to be used in programs for young people, um, rehab programs, and just different type of investments for our families. Programas que sean accesibles a los niños gratis. Programs that are accessible for kids that are free. Ya que hay muchos madres de familias que son solteras y no, y aunque tengamos marido, pues no, no podemos pagar los servicios que la comunidad ofrece para nosotros porque son muy caros. Those services at the community centers are extremely expensive and, you know, whether we're independent moms or even if we have a partner, we can't afford the cost um, for, those, for those programs in those community centers. Sí, eso es todo lo que quería hablar y empezar a decir algo. That's all I wanted to say. And Juana. Buenas tardes, mi nombre es Juana Rita. Como Good afternoon, my name is Juana Rita and I'm here with tengo my una partner. Pregunta. I only have one question. Porque están poniendo, esta demanda la hicimos el año pasado, un programa de compensación para víctimas afectadas por la policía. So we, last year, you know, we asked for a, a compensation, some kind of trauma compensation fund for estoy, people impacted by police violence. Estoy viendo que nos dieron 550 mil dólares. Mi pregunta es, I'm ese seeing, fondo, las personas que sean afectadas por la policía, ¿lo van a otorgar gratis o tenemos que hacer un pago? So um, my question is, right, I see that there's 550,000 going to support trauma services of, of those victims. And uh, my question is, are, there, are people going to be asked to then also pay to then get, receive these services, or are they going to be able to access these services uh, for free? Van a ser gratis, no, la gente no se les va a pedir que paguen ese servicio. Okay, perfecto. Muchas gracias. Okay, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Test one. Yeah, there we go. So thank you for uh, participation. Is there anybody else who, who came here to speak that didn't get a chance to? We do have time. We're here. For just a minute, we had air conditioning and then went off again. So uh, again, apologize for the, for the warmth in here. Um, again, we appreciate the, the input and the feedback. We'll be happy to s stay here. I'll be here afterwards to answer questions if there are specific ones that I can answer and there's some that are asked here that I can. Uh, and again, we thank you for coming out, for taking your time to be here, uh, your valuable time to be here and, and share with us uh, what, what you see here with us. Uh, we will be at the council on May the 7th with a, a, fi a final presentation for the council, and then they will vote on May the 22nd on that. And I also want to thank Councilwoman Guevara for hosting us here in Via de Paz. Councilwoman? Thank you again for everyone for being here. Maria, did you have a question? Uh, it should be May 22nd, the next day. May 21st is election day, and so May 22nd will be when the council meeting is held. 
and we also have city staff. If you had a specific question regarding, I think I heard someone about street street lights. Yeah, Lori's here in the back to report the street light that's been out that you, was reported since December. So please connect with her to help that get addressed. Thank you. Anything else? We'll be here again. We have city staff from different departments. If you have specific questions, thank you all so much for being here, and look forward to seeing you at uh, the upcoming budget hearings as well. Thank you. Thank you.